Welcome to part two of working with the music editor in Studio One Three. And as I was preparing for this video, I realized that there's a ton of information when working with uh, MIDI and editing and all of the different functions that are available. So there's actually going to be four parts to this series. And let's just go ahead and jump into part two. I'm going to go ahead and select a MIDI part and press F2 to bring up our music editor. And in the name of getting a more a bit more real estate in our screen here, I'm using a smaller screen, I'm using a laptop. So I'm going to just go ahead and close out our part, part automation lane by clicking this icon here. And this way we can see a bit more of what's going on in our music editor. And just for a quick review, we saw in part one of working with the music editor that we can add, resize, and delete MIDI notes with both the arrow tool and the paint tool. And these both function in a similar way. So whether we're going to uh, double click with our arrow tool, if we have the paint tool selected, then we just click once to add our notes. And you can see that these are both added as quarter notes, and that's because our quantize value is set to quarter notes. And our snap to grid, which is turned on right now, is also going to have an influence on the positioning of these notes. I'm actually going to just control Z to get rid of those. So while it's active, when I click once with the paint tool, then this snaps to uh, our grid here. If I were to turn off the snap to grid and then click, we can see it clicks wherever we're positioned. Our mouse, our, our paint tool is positioned. It's going to position that new note there. So just keep in mind that there is a difference between the quantized value and the snap to grid in that when our snap to grid is on, we're going to snap to whatever our quantized value is set. And if we turn that off, we're still going to get our quarter note, but it's just going to be uh, placed at wherever we're clicking. So I'll control Z and remove those out. And I'll bring the arrow tool back up. Now if I double click and hold and drag, I can then resize that to whatever I'd like to be. And the same holds true with the uh, paint tool. If I click and drag, then I can resize that note, uh, kind of disregarding this quarter note setting. And with either of these tools, and at any time, I can then come in to the uh, beginning or end of our notes and resize at any time. Of course, this is going to be affected by our snap to grid. So if I turn that back on, then we'll see that I'm jumping. We're jumping here by quarter notes. You'll also notice, and we talked about this in part one, that as we add or select our notes, we are hearing a preview of the notes that we're working with. So if we don't want that to happen, we come to the audition notes, deselect that. And then now, if I double click with the arrow tool, we can hear that this is not uh, auditioning our sounds or our created notes rather. And we can just double click to remove. One other thing to keep in mind is that we have a default velocity and I don't think we covered this in part one, but right now it's set to 80%. That is the default value. So when I create a note, um, actually we'll bring up our part automation lane and this is our note. So notice that the velocity is 80%. And if I select, if while this is selected, we can see our music editor inspector that the velocity is 80%. So if we were to change that to 50%, and then I'll double click to add a note, we can see that with that new note selected, it is at 50. So that's what we're going to use the default velocity field for. And I'm just going to go ahead and change that back to the default of 80. And I'll go ahead and close out that part automation lane select these notes that we created and delete those out. And I want to turn back the audition notes on. And speaking of the uh, inspector here, we did touch on that in part one, and we saw that we can use this to view various information on a selected note and make changes to that note here. We can also make changes to a group of selected notes with the inspector, and there are a variety of functions we can make use of when editing groups of notes, so let's take a look at some of these features. Now in order to uh, select a group of notes, we can just use the key command control A. And then now we have all of the notes selected within the MIDI part that we have in focus in our editor. I'll go ahead and deselect those. And if I hold down control shift and A, then we can select all of the notes 
within all of the parts on our particular track. So right now we have this presence, which is a piano part. And you can see that by holding down that control shift and A, we'll select each individual MIDI note on all of the MIDI parts for the track that we're curr currently working with in the editor. And if we were to come up to the edit here in the top menu, we can see that under select, there are a variety of different selection options that are available to us here as well. And then you'll find the corresponding key commands that you can use in order to make use of these. I'm going to scroll back over to our first event here and control A to select all of those. And while we have our group of notes selected, we can hold down control and click on a specific note and the rest of the notes will be instantly resized to that note. And while we're still holding down control, we can also drag that single note to resize all of the selected notes. So if I were to, I'll hold down control and click on this uh, D2 note and you can see that its length here is basically one bar. So I'll hold control and click. And we want to be sure that we do that at the end of the note. And we can see that all of the other selected MIDI notes then adjust their length accordingly. And I'll control Z to undo that. And then come to the end of this note and hold control. And this time, I will click and then drag and we can see that we can resize all of our selected notes while still holding control down. Now another function that is available to us when we're working with a group of selected notes is uh, holding alt and while holding alt on a specific note we will change the note off or the end positions of all of our selected notes to that one that we're clicking on. So um, let's see, we'll come to this uh, C2, which basically ends at the end of this part and uh, at the end of bar six. So if I click, then you, the rest of these notes should extend their length all the way to this one. So I'll hold Alt and click, then you can see how that works there. And I'll just go ahead and undo that. We can also use Alt to cre uh, create duplicates of the selected notes that we have here. So while holding Alt, if I come more to the center area of a single note, I'll hold Alt, click, and then drag, and we've now created duplicates of all of our selected notes. Now, we can also, if we were to use that, now here I have the second MIDI part selected, we can use that to create a new MIDI part on our track or extend this MIDI part out. So if I, let me control A, select all of our notes, I'll hold down Alt, click, hold and drag. And now we can see that that MIDI part has been extended out and our notes have been duplicated as well. And you've probably noticed that when we're working with editing these notes, only one, one of these parts has been active at a time. And to make a part active for editing, you can see that this is sort of grayed out, uh, the grid is. We can click in an empty space or on a individual note to make this active. And now that that first part is active, this one is no longer. But again, we can also use that key combination, Control, Shift, and A to make a selection of all of our notes for editing, depend, no matter what uh, part is active. Another option that we have for duplicating our notes is just the more traditional commands of uh, cut, copy, and pasting. So I will control A and select all of these notes here. And then if I right click, we can see that we have cut, copy, paste, delete available. I'm just going to choose copy. We could also press control C. Now, now that that's copied, I'm going to position my song cursor on bar 17 here, and then I'll press control V on the keyboard. And now we can see that we've duplicated those notes out on a newly created MIDI part. If I go ahead and zoom out a bit, 
then we can see that more clearly. I'm going to press E to zoom back in. Now while we were on the topic of working with groups of notes, know that it is possible to work with the MIDI data from more than one instrument track at a time. And this could be particularly useful if you're, say, working with drum parts spread out over different tracks and you'd like to work with them in relation to one another. And so if I, let's navigate in our range view to the beginning of our song here. Now we have this first event selected, this first MIDI part, and we can see that that's active now within our music editor. If I were to hold down shift and select this drum part here that I've got a battery on, then we can see that this automatically resizes to include that uh, MIDI data for the battery part as well down below. And all of these MIDI notes for both tracks are active and available for editing. Now if you were going to be working with a lot of different tracks and uh, using the editor within this way, keep in mind that one tool that you can use to help distinguish the MIDI data that's contained within the editor when you have multiple tracks selected is we can come in and change the track color. Right now these are set to the default auto color, auto color. but if I come up to the drum part here and then click on the left hand side, I could also come down to this area of the editor. Then we have our color palette, and if I choose this, say, reddish color here, then we can see that our MIDI notes down below for the battery or the drum part have changed to red. And this is going to help us distinguish between this piano part up above, I mean, beyond the note length, which makes it more obvious. But if you've got tracks that are selected and, and the notes are kind of more similar in length, then changing the color can help you really uh, navigate and find what you're looking for within the editor. Also remember that we have the track list available to us within the music editor to help us with um, working with our data. And so now we can see the battery track here and the piano track. They both have the uh, white circles next to them, which means they are active. If I were to deselect the battery, then you can see that that information goes away below and this is grayed out. If I select it, then we can see that that is now active again. And the uh, this edit icon or the pencil icon is blue, meaning that that's available for editing. And I can select these notes. And the piano part is grayed out now. And our edit icon or the pencil tool is gray as well. So if I wanted to make them both active for editing, then I can just click this uh, edit icon and now both the piano part and the drums are available for editing. If at any time we'd like to return to working with just one MIDI part, know that we can come up to the arrange view and just find that part. And then we could also use this track list here, but if I were to click on this piano MIDI part, then we can see that the editor adjusts itself and sizes that MIDI part to contain all of the notes uh, at a zoom level where we can easily edit each of the notes contained within that part that I selected. The last feature we're going to cover in part two is the scale function or scale snapping. Since we're talking about working with editing our notes and moving things around, and as we know our snap to grid here, which is turned on, as well as our quantize value and whatever we have that set to are going to affect the horizontal positioning of our MIDI notes and the scale snapping affects our vertical note value or pitch. And so we can actually set our vertical snapping to specific note values within a variety of musical scales and we would activate that by clicking the uh, checkbox here next to scale. And I'm actually going to come over to the second part and I'll actually just select that in the Arrange view and press D to create an additional copy that we can work with. That's automatically then highlighted and edited or ready for editing here. And I'm going to just select these top notes and get rid of those. And then let's go ahead and activate our scale. 
And if you notice here on our piano roll, we now have these blue indicators. So if I deselect, you can see that it's just a normal keyboard. I'll go ahead and select again. We now have these indicators. And these basically will show us what position or pitch we can then move these notes vertically. And below our scale area here, we can set the uh, root and then the scale here. So if I were to change this to uh, minor pentatonic, then we can see that our these blue indicators adjust accordingly. And I can then play these on the keyboard. Anything that isn't highlighted blue is silenced. And then as far as the notes are concerned, the whole purpose for this feature is if I try to drag this to one below, you see we don't have an indicator there. So it basically skips entirely over that note and to this next blue highlighted one. Now if I try to move that to the next one, you see it skips and snaps to C1 because that is part of our scale that we're working with. And so just know that you can come over to the root section and change this at any time. And the keyboard here, or the piano roll, will update to reflect our choice. And there's a variety of different scales here that we can choose from. I'll choose the Dorian here. And then when we are adjusting our notes, we're going to get that automatic snap to whatever settings that we've chosen there. And so I think we'll go ahead and wrap up here. In part three, we're going to talk about the rest of the tools here and a bit more in depth and some of the deeper features and functions that they have available to them, as well as uh, using transpose, humanize, and a few other things. And in part four, we are going to talk about the part automation lane. And this is going to be an important one because we're going to cover editing our velocity, and take a look at some of these other functions and adding automation and editing that automation, which is really has more to do with automation, but since it's a part of the editor and it's an important part of working with our MIDI and really using the tools that are available here to create the sounds that we want to hear, you can. it's important to talk about, and I think you can do a lot of creative effects and things down with the uh, part automation lane. So thank you for watching and hope to see you in part three.